Hi, I'm Channing McCorriston, the Container Guy. With me today here is Wild Bill Will. <laughs> we are going to install this AC Infinity T10 exhaust vent in the side of a shipping container. They have a great, what they call an ecosystem. And so these very intuitive controllers, they allow you to understand and data log the temperature and the humidity inside your container. They do a lot with cannabis, cannabis growth and that there closely relates to how shipping containers are a non-insulated container where you want the inside of that unit to be a different temperature or humidity than what it is on the outside. And so it very closely aligns with ventilating shipping containers, what they're working on, and therefore their products work great for ventilating shipping containers. So in this video, we're gonna throw this in real quick. Uh, give you guys a tutor tutorial on it and maybe uh, show off some of the advanced features that these fans have for fairly low cost. Stay tuned. So to start off, we'll talk about this exhaust fan here. These things are great. They're a DC powered motor, so they're super efficient and uh, they pump out quite a bit of uh, volume there. So they come in 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch, and 16 inch sizes. We like the 10 inch because corrugations are 11 inches on center, so this one fits very nicely in just two corrugations. We don't need this huge bulky frame to span across uh, the third. And uh, with these things, they have, what is it, 631 CFM. And so the amount of CFM that's, or cubic feet, that's inside of a 20 foot, this thing will exchange the air about every two minutes, which is crazy. That's a, that's a, lot, of, uh, a lot of power there. But one thing also to note is that these need to be coupled with intake uh, dampers. And so we have two 10 inch intake dampers for one of these 10 inch exhaust fans, which seems to balance the air flow quite perfectly. Uh, another thing to talk about is these controllers. These things are very intuitive. Uh, they have Bluetooth connectivity and the newest ones are also uh, Wi-Fi capable. But even if you only get the Bluetooth controller 69, these things are constantly data logging the environment inside this container. So it'll give you updates, whether you walk by it on your phone or, or if you just check the app on the Wi-Fi versions, the entire time inside your shipping container, you can understand what the humidity is and what the temperature is and then set high and low parameters of when this thing actually turns on to be exhausting the air and balancing the environment inside the can. So that there is the, uh, the tour of the product. It's an amazing product. That's why we selected it rather than just the regular uh, exhaust fans that you get, you know, at your local, what would you call them? Princess Autos. I don't know if I'm supposed to say their brand, but <laughs> that's where we used to get them prior to this, but we love these things and we'll never go back. So. Container Modification World has a frame specifically built for the T10 exhaust vent. This is it here. Uh, we made a few changes to it, but these things are kind of special compared to our other vent frames. They actually they install half and half, and so uh, the outside portion of it installs from the outside, and then what William's got there in his hand is the inside portion of this, and that will actually slide through, and then it gives drip edges on the top and bottom to stop water from coming around and, and trying to get into your container. So uh, we'll get William to throw this in, we'll let you guys watch that, and we'll connect the frame from the inside, and then lastly, throw this uh, exhaust fan in here and just show you what it looks like when it's all buttoned up. Get out of here. So I'll jump inside and I'll slide this frame through the hole now. Uh, this, you'll notice the interior part of the frame, it's got the M6 rib nuts on it. So that allows the, uh, the included hardware with the T10 vent to be utilized to install. So the vent will just sit inside here. One thing that's been changed on this interior frame is that there's uh, flanges on the side, top and bottom. And that allows us when we're uh, framing and insulating containers something to trim up to. So that was just something the guys in the shop uh, requested and the engineers have changed. And so 
This thing's pretty dialed in now. Let's just, I'll go throw it in. And then William, I think, can connect. What we'll have to do is, now that this frame is in on the side, these rivets here would get in the way. So they're not assembled ahead of time. But I believe now William can just throw those in right away, right? Yeah. So they'll just get in the way as we slide it through the rough opening. You might notice the audio is a little bit better here now. Rookie mistake, I uh, forgot to turn my mic on. So hopefully the rest of this video or the previous part of it's salvageable, but we'll get back at her. So now that we've jumped inside the uh, container to see this frame, there's six more rivets that we need to put in. So I'll throw them in right now. Alignment issues. No, oh, that's that looks mint. So we'll grab that vent, throw her in. So this thing's deadly. Um, a lot of times when we're installing these, we're installing them in uh, steel studded and insulated containers. And now with these flanges that I was talking about earlier, we're able to use our steel stud brackets. We can run studs down both sides of this and then ones across and then take just some galve angle and trim that after our interior wall coverings on. So that worked great there. Uh, the controllers here, they're magnetic. You wouldn't want to transport them that way, but we could also just self-tap into this top tubing to hang that. And that there will hold it during transport and uh, kind of keep it up and out of the way so nobody wrecks this beautiful piece of equipment. Then the one cord that isn't, or still in the box, is it's got a temperature and humidity sensor. And so that you could maybe put in the middle of your container. You can even kind of, some people, a lot of times with electrical, they'll loop it through their D-rings. Uh, but yeah, if you maybe got that into a centralized location just to check the, uh, the climate in here and then, then turn this thing on when it needs to, to run. One other thing, typically containers are, are uh, wired and we have electrical in here and a place to plug this in. But in this instance, there's no other wiring going in this can. And the only way to really get power is someone would have to like run this cord through the door seal. I hate that. And so we do have, uh, it's actually like they're little dongles for plugging in like your block heater or for a camper. And so there you just drill a two inch hole, run that through, and then you can plug this in on the inside and then run a, it's a male receptacle on the outside for an extension cord. So we should actually get that installed here.
So just a final thought on the outside here. This is it all buttoned up. Uh, it's, you know, a simple product, but a very, very uh, useful, valuable product, especially, you know, it serves its purpose very well. One thing to know about the placement of this vent is it's right next to the doors. I always strongly advise customers not to install things within the first four feet because your door swings around and it can hit this. And so the door uh, lock rod actually does collide up here with the, the rain drip portion of this frame. And so now what we have to do is install something somewhere else on a corner post to avoid that from swinging around in the wind and actually damaging this frame. But customer was adamant that this is where this goes. It does make sense to mount this here given that a roll up door is on the end wall and, and the intakes through the brush seal. So it makes sense where it goes, but now we just have a little bit extra work, but just for yourself, if you're ever doing a modification to a container or you're planning out a container home or something, don't put your man door or your walk-in door or a window within the first four feet of the shipping container doors if you plan on keeping them usable because yeah, you're either gonna block your window when the doors are open or you're gonna swing the doors around and wreck the door handle on your door. So very important tip there on the planning stages of your mod project. But as far as this video, I think that pretty much wraps it up. If you guys found value from this, please help us out. Give the video a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.